I'm Felicia Scott, and I am one of the supervisors for AS for, the, for Anatomy. I've been the supervisor for more than 15 years for this event. Um, it's a fun event for your students, and most important is let the kids have fun. Okay, let them enjoy themselves. They'll learn a lot of, you know, neat stuff. And you as a coach will also learn by coaching them. So um, my co-supervisor is Mary Kelly, and we are faculty mem members in the biology department at Macomb Community College at Center Campus. So that's our main uh, base station. So um, at Macomb at Center Campus, we have a learning center, and that learning center will be available uh, to help you guys go and study and use the models and charts that we will use on the exam. Uh, you do not have the same uh, setup at the South Campus Learning Center, so let me just say that. So everything that um, we provide for you to help prepare for the main event in May, May 13th, we put over in the Center Campus Learning Center because that's where we are based. Um, so here, this is the uh, document I am working for from today. This document will also be posted on the Macomb Science Olympiad homepage. And Manisha is actually going to take us there a little later. So again, the materials that we will provide for your students to study uh, are at Macomb Community College, the center campus. And the hours of operation for the Learning Center and its location are at the top of this document. And they are open Monday through Saturday. They are closed on Sundays. So these hours are subject to change. In this document, you'll also find the uh, link directly to the Learning Center. Now we will be closed the first week of March for spring break, so keep that in mind. The hours may vary uh, during that time. These materials available at the Learning Center include diagrams and models of the anatomical structures that your students will be uh, tested on on the day of the competition. It is very rare for us to use diagrams like a schematic representation of a structure, so keep that in mind. Uh, so if you like to use like pictures that you've just photocopied or you're using a textbook to study, it is um, extremely rare for students to see something in terms of a picture from a textbook or some type of schematic drawing on the exam. They're tested on the models and the charts. Um, the materials in the Learning Center will not be available until Monday, February 20th. Okay. This is after our first unit exams at the college because uh, the first units we cover are skeletal and the skeletal system and the muscular system. And these are two of the systems that we're actually studying uh, this time around for Science Olympiad. So we'll have three different systems that we're studying. We're studying the skeletal system, the muscular system, and the cardiovascular system. And in a minute, uh, Manisha is actually going to show you the study guide for the these three systems. So there, uh -oh, so we're not quite ready for that one. So um, that is available at the Macomb Science Olympiad website under AS for Anatomy. So we have the skeletal system, the muscular system, and the cardiovascular system. Now these are pictures, right? So that's just to get you started. What you really want to do is get to the learning center when the materials become available. So once again, you will not be able to go to that learning center and study those materials until or starting Monday, February 20th. But starting Monday, February 13th, you can call to start making appointments. Please do not call before Monday, February 13th to make an appointment. So you'll have one week to start getting your appointments ready. And then the following Monday, the 20th, you will be able to actually go on campus and use the materials. So when you present at the Learning Center, please remember you have to have an appointment. You need to check in at the front desk upon your arrival. And you're going to need a picture ID. A lot of the models and um, charts that we'll be using or you'll be using to uh, coach your students 
they are very delicate and they are expensive. So to make sure that we get them back in a good, you know, a good condition, we require a picture ID. Um, the other thing is bring only the children studying for the Science Olympiad. Try to leave the younger children at home. One, they can be distracting and they can basically sometimes be a little noisy because now you're trying to keep them quiet and at the same time, try to coach, trying to coach your students. Appointments are limited to one or two hours blocks of time due to the demand on the materials. No refreshments or snacks are allowed in the learning center. The materials that you will be given as student study aids are fragile once again, especially the skull. It is extremely uh, fragile. It is asked that you and your students treat them with respect and keep them in the designated area. The other thing that we will be doing uh, this semester is that we will be running a workshop. So we'll run an anatomy workshop on Friday, February the 24th. It is free, but you have to register. Okay, so again, it's free. You don't pay anything to actually participate, but you do have to register. And the registration for the workshop is actually on the Macomb Science Olympiad uh, home, on the Science, Science Olympiad uh, page for anatomy. So if you go to A is for anatomy on the Macomb Science Olympiad page, you'll see this little button that says sign up now, and that's for the work, workshop. The workshop will be held at Center Campus, and that workshop will be held in the University Center, building number two, room 232. And so on Friday, February 24th, starting at 530, we'll have three different sessions and you have to, you can only sign up for one. We'll have a 530 session, we'll have a 610 session, and then we'll have a 650 session. In that section, I'll basically set up a practice exam for your students. The students will be allowed, I'll bring them students into the exam room in groups and the parents will stay in a different room and then I'll take the students through the process of the exam. It will not be an entire exam. It will be somewhere between 10 to 20 questions. And then after the student finishes, we'll call the parents in and they'll be able to see, or I say parents, but coaches, and they'll be able to see how the exam is set up. And so um, typically in that setting, you're allowed to ask questions, you're allowed to say, okay, you know, how do I get my student ready for this? And then at the same time, you'll be able to basically flip the question over and see the actual answer. So again, this is a workshop for anatomy. It's going to be held on Friday, February 24th. There will be three sessions, 530, 610, and 650 and you must register even though there is no fee. Um, so the link for doing the registration is on the AS for Anatomy homepage, and it's that little button that says sign up now. That's the other thing. Any question that you have regarding AS for Anatomy, it cannot come directly to me. It has to first be posted to the Macomb Science Olympiad workshop, or Science Olympiad website and then from there I respond to the questions so please don't and this has happened in the past and that's why I'm going to say this please don't go to the Macomb website find out my Macomb email address and send me a question what will happen is I'll say oh this is a very good question please post it to the Macomb Science Olympiad website I will not answer it I'll tell you to post it first this way, everyone gets to see the answers because nine times out of 10, if you have a question, someone else has a question. And sometimes it's the exact same question. Okay. Real now, quick, Felicia. Go ahead, Manish. Yes. I have that on the screen. Yes. It's called FAQs. Some questions are already there posted, but when you want to post the question, you can go to ask rules, clarifications, click here, put your question in, and then it will behind the scenes, come to us and we'll consult you and post the question here. Yes. Okay. All yours. 
Oh, thanks, Manish. So mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would like to go over with you today is on page two of the original document, and it says on the day of the competition. So these are the rules. Yes. So next page. You wanted the second one or the first yes, one? Yes, the, the second page that has uh, on okay. the day of the competition. So these are the instructions basically for the parents, okay, yeah. for the coaches. I keep saying parents because most of the time the coaches are the parents, so or parents of students participating. So here it says notes to the coaches and competitors. So on the day of the competition, which is May the 13th, it is very important that you are timely. You have to be prompt. We begin on time and you, we end on time. Your students will come in one way and exit another way. So we have signs on the doors. I'll come out and speak to you. I'll say to you, OK, we're bringing them in this way, but we're going to actually direct them out the door that leads into the main uh, area, the main stadium when they exit. So we will begin the competition at exactly the time designated. We do not have the luxury of waiting for any team. If there is a scheduled conflict, you have to get that straight before the day of the competition. Okay. Two, two number two pencils should be brought to the competition by each team. No clipboards, no cell phones, all of that other stuff needs to stay in your possession. We will supply the Scantron type answer sheets to the students. Please do not provide your students with labels for the answer sheets. So when they get the answer sheets, when they come in, their Scantron answer sheet will actually be at a station and then we'll have them check the name of the school and we'll have them check their team number. Uh, students should practice using the Scantron answer sheets. This is a really important thing to go through with your students and they'll get if they come to the workshop, we'll work on that with them. So um, sometimes the students will come in and they've never seen this Scantron type uh, answer sheet before. And so instead of shading in the square or the oval, they'll put a check mark, they'll circle it, they'll put an X through it. And then that means that their Scantron will not be graded correctly. At the beginning, when they do the first couple of questions, we actually are circulating in the room to make sure they're marking the Scantron answer sheet properly. But what happens is when we catch them and they're not doing properly, they sort of get frustrated and they're like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. So please practice marking the Scantron answer sheet, the Scantron type answer sheet with your students. Uh, students should try to erase as few answers as possible as it is difficult to make the erasures complete. Please do not have students bring clipboards, scrap paper, backpacks, purses, or cell phones to the event as they will not be allowed into the competition room. There will be a total of 22 stations. The student will be answering four multiple choice questions per station in one minute. So they have to answer all four questions in one minute, except for that tiebreaker. At the tiebreaker, they're going to actually be writing out their answers. And I actually have uh, a little later when I finish the on the day of the competition, I'm actually going to show you some sample questions. So when they're writing their answers out, spelling counts, but we only look at the tiebreaker to break ties. Students are not allowed to talk during the competition, but they can point to the correct answer or use nonverbal communications. This is something else you have to work on with your students. They're young, you know, they're used to talking and expressing their ideas and what they call whispering is really talking. OK, so a lot of the times we have to say, shh, shh, please watch. Um, watch watch your volume. And so practice with them, you know, using their eraser to point to an answer or some type of finger sign, like one means A, two means B, three means C, four means D, and five means E, so that it's nonverbal in the exam. The other thing I strongly urge you guys to do is to have one person 
be the expert that the other person defers to on a certain system. So for example, uh, if you have, you, ha you have two people on a team, if one person is the expert on the skeletal system, when they come to a station and they can't agree on the answer, then they already know the person who's the expert on that system, that's who they defer to. We don't need them in there arguing over what's the correct answer. So I usually suggest that, you know, we have three different systems and basically they decide in advance who's going to be the final, who's going to get the final answer for the correct answer. So remember, there are four multiple choice questions, but you only have one minute. So they don't have time to stand there arguing over who's right and who's wrong for a particular question. So uh, this is a standing competition. So students will move through the exam without sitting unless there's a medical reason. So if you have a student who is either in a wheelchair or on crutches, we actually have to know that in advance so that we can prepare for that. Um, students are not allowed to touch any model or picture during the competition. The stations have to be, remain in the same position for all competitors. This is also a hard uh, thing to get the students used to because before they get to the competition, you know, when you guys have been studying together, they've been touching stuff, they've been moving stuff, they've been rotating around so that they can understand, you know, what it looks like from each angle. And then now in the competition, they can't touch anything. And so you have to uh, get them used to that. Another way to get them used to the competition conditions is that in your coaching, when you meet to coach towards the end, when you think they're really comfortable with the information, you set up a mock exam for them. And so if they're, you know, if they're displaying any of these behaviors that they can't have during the day of the competition, you can correct them then, right? Because again, you know, it takes time for us to go around and try to co correct behaviors that shouldn't be displayed in the competition itself. The other things is that students will not be able to return to any station. So they get one look at all four questions. So if they, let's say they say, oh, I, I missed question number 13, I need to go back. They can't go back at all, okay? The other thing is if they don't know the answer to a question, they still need to choose. So make an educated guess because if they don't shade in an answer for that particular question, it can mess up their uh, numbering. So when they go to mark on the Scantron answer sheet, they'll be off if they skip a question. Parents and coaches are not allowed into the competition room. They should remain quietly in the hallway outside the classroom. Uh, you'll look for signs as to where to pick up the students after the event is over, and as is often, not the door where you drop them off. So again, it'll be the opposite door. The last thing is, is that please have students use the restroom before entering the competition room. So on occasion, you know, they're, they're excited, you know, and all of a sudden they get in there and they have to use the restroom. If they have to use the restroom, we will let them use the restroom. The thing is, when they come back, they don't get to, you know, go back and see what they miss. So that means that if it's a two person team, one person has been answering the questions while the other teammate has been at the back in the bathroom. And so if the person in the bathroom is the expert on the skeletal system and all the questions that the one person has seen is skeletal, your team may be in a little trouble. So keep in mind, it's very important that they go to the bathroom before they enter the competition room. Um, then the last document, well, second from the last document is actually an example. So the next page, Manish, oops. Um, maybe I didn't give you, I thought I gave you this one. It's the one that says, um, so that's on the day of the competition, the directions read to the student. Okay. So on, thank you so much. So on the day of the competition, we will read these directions to the students before we 
begin the exam. So they have to check their school name. They have to check their team number. They then have to turn over the answer sheet, and that's where they're going to find the numbers 85, 86, 87, and 88. These will be the tiebreaker questions. Then they will be told to circle the number they're starting at because only one team in that entire room will start at question number one. So they circle that number and then I tell them at the end, you're going to start here and at the end, you're going to end up back here. They will not be allowed to sit. Okay, so there are a total of 88 questions. The last four, 85, 86, 87, and 88 are tiebreaker questions where they have to write out the answer and spelling counts. And so again, during the exam, right at the beginning, they're going to, I'm going to read these directions to them. I'm going to say, do you have any questions before we start? And every now and then somebody will raise their hand, right? And then we'll say, okay, turn around. We're about to begin. And we go from there. And then we keep moving through that competition, through the questions, until everyone has seen each station once. Now, something we've done lately is that, you know, sometimes students have a problem with personal space. So nowadays, we actually put a piece of tape between the stations so that that team knows, okay, you can't go over this tape because this belongs to the next team right now. So that has worked out quite well because sometimes, you know, they'll be, you know, elbow, body turning around and then they're encroaching on the space of the next team. So this, the tape has helped a lot. The other thing is, is that the questions themselves are basically put in a piece of plastic. So they're put in a, a, a sheet protector and then they're put in a plastic stand. So this plastic stand is sort of at a slant. And it keeps us, one, it keeps the students from writing on the questions. And two, it basically is in a position that both members of the team have a good look at the question. And pretty much that's all I have. I will say that I have coached this event when I first started. How I got into Science Olympiad is through coaching my elementary uh, school students. And so that's been a very long time ago. And so I, I really, you know, say to the parents, to the coaches, let the kids have fun, because really, I truly believe that learning should be fun and science above all else is fun. And Manish, that's all I have. If they have any questions. Sounds good. If anybody has questions, you can unmute, unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, we'll hang around. If there are no questions, we'll hang around for five more minutes and uh, then we'll move on to the next session. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Also, all of the presentations, uh, all of the documents from today's presentation uh, will be posted. Uh, Actually, you know what? I forgot some of niche. Can you show sure. them the sample questions for me? I'm sorry. Yeah. I forgot in my in yep. my, you know, excitement right there. <laughs> right there. So, OK, so here's a series <clears throat> of questions or sample questions for you. So most of the time there will be a colored arrow arrow with a number and it's pointing to a structure or some type of surface. And it says name the part of the bone or name this muscle or name this chamber of the heart or name this blood vessel for the skeletal system they have to be able to di differentiate between cervical lumbar and thoracic vertebrae so it may be specifically name this type of vertebrae the other thing they will be asked is the pathway of blood through the heart so if you look at question number four if this is the question it'll usually have a little star by it. And that tells them that there is no model that goes with this. This is a question. And so it says, after blood leaves this chamber, it moves directly into the blank. So here, when I say this chamber, there may be an arrow, let's say on the left ventricle, but the answer would be aorta. So you're, they're not identifying 
what the arrow is touching. It's asking them a specific question. And so we put these little uh, stars by that question, say, hey, pay attention to this. It's not just name the structure where the arrow is. Every now and then, I may have left ventricle as one of the answers. And that tells me if they're paying attention to the questions. Okay, tiebreaker questions. So here, again, there will be four tiebreaker questions, 85, 86, and 85, 86, 87, and 88. And then they're told that they have to write their answers here and that spelling counts. This section of the exam is only graded if two teams are tied or two or more teams are tied with the same score. So sometimes they'll be stressing out about these questions. I'll say, oh, you know, you don't know, you don't know, let's go. Okay, so keep that in mind. It'll only be graded if there is a tie among more than one team. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Sorry, forgot this. <clears throat> We'll open it up to questions. Anybody has question, please unmute, unmute yourself and ask the question. Hey, Manish, yeah, uh, I did have a question. Um, so um, I'm looking at the uh, macomb.org anatomy page. So in terms for A's for anatomy, right, kids are supposed mm -hmm. to prep up for a skeletal system guide, muscle study guide, and cardiovascular study guide. Are those yes. the three sections they need to prep up for? Okay. Yes. And only those structures in the study guide, nothing else. Nothing else? Okay. Nothing yeah. else. <clears throat> so if you, the other thing everybody should know is the event rules, which is also on the website. Actually, let me go to the website. So you go to the website, you hit A for anatomy, it will take you to its page. And then right here, the red button is the this year's event rule. A lot of time people look at the rules from last year and the event has changed from last year. So I would recommend you look at the event rules here and this tells you in detail as to what's covered this year. Any other questions? <clears throat> so everybody should know this website, macomso.org. Go to the elementary. Uh, you can look at other things, but events. And when you go to the events, it pops up this page and every event is here. And each event has its own section. Oh, can you so, go there so they can see also again where they sign up for the workshop? Yep. So please get signed up for the workshop, this, right? Because this the spaces blue are button limited. right here. <laughs> yes. Sign up now. <clears throat> that tells you that there is a workshop for this event. Now, Manish, if you click on this event uses a custom zip grade form, does it show them the form? Yes. Right Great. There. This is the form we use. Mm -hmm. So I would print out several of those so that your students can practice. And note, oh, this is it. Can you go back to that for me, Manish? Yep. That you see how it goes 1 to 12, right? 13 to 25, and then it goes back up to the top again, right? So you they have to get look, used to these types of columns. Not only that, uh, but one other thing I was going to ask everybody was how many, how many of you are coaching for the first time, completely brand new to Science Olympiad. If you can, you know, put something in the chat session so I, I get a good idea, but not every kid is going to start at question number one. So station one will have questions one through four, let's say. Yes. Station two will have questions five through eight. And then let's say station three has questions nine through 12. So one set of kid is going to start at station one. One set of kid is going to start at station two. So when they answer their first question, it is question number five. So they should be marking at question number five, not at question number one. 
Eventually, they will walk around and come back to question one to end. But every kid is going to start at a different station. So the kids need to understand that. <clears throat> Great. Any other questions? We have a lot of first time. Yeah, a lot of first time. I have a question. Sure. Is there a negative marking or no? No, there is no, no. negative marking. It's either right or wrong. So only the rights count. Yes, and let me just say this, that there will be certain questions worth more points. And this is just to, and no one knows what those questions are until we go to, to um, correct them. So the people who help us in scoring, I have to tell them which questions count the most. So not every question will be worth one point in terms of the multiple choice. This is separate from the tiebreaker. And this is basically try to try to eliminate the number of teams who are tied. And so I may, you know, looking at the question about the pathway of blood, I may say, okay, this question here is worth three points, while all the, all the other ones that, that say identify this structure, they're worth one point. And this is also included, uh, you know, generally speaking, in each event page uh, under the rules. So what you see on my screen, there is a scoring section and that tells you you know all the nut and bolts about how this particular event is scored any other questions So apart from this uh, Eben coach training uh, meeting today, you know, are there any following meetings? Like, you know, if we have questions later on. So, <clears throat> no, there are no any follow up meetings to this, but okay. there is a there is a coaches. The clinic that uh, Felicia talked about, I forgot mm -hmm. the date Felicia, correct? That's me, February, but... the, that's February the 24th. So that's a okay. workshop where they'll have a sample exam so it'll be a sample yep. competition okay so okay. real quick if you read the rules it pretty much encompasses everything that you, the kids will be tested on and then if you go to the website and look at the page it should give you all the study guides and all the you know there is three different study guides that you can you can look at the skeletal, the muscular, and the cardiovascular. On top, beginning in February February twentieth, correct? Twenty fourth. Um, Twenty fourth. Yep. You can go look at the models. Oh, and for them to look at the models is February twentieth. The workshop yeah, is February twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. So yes. February twentieth. You can go look at the model and I pulled up on my page. So you see on the right side, we have included some photographs. So you kind of get an idea of what the stations are like. And how the, the items are, how the things are numbered, what you are expected. Doesn't mean this is, you know, current picture, but this is to give you an idea. So these pictures that are rolling, there is five or six it gives you an idea. <clears throat> of what they are being, what what it will be like for kids in the room. And I can I say one other thing, Manish? Absolutely. So sometimes coaches will say, well, my students don't know anything. Why should I go to the workshop? So that they can see what it's going to be like. It's not a question of for the workshop, you know, what do you know coming into the workshop? The workshop is there is just to give you an idea of the atmosphere and how things will be set up for your student. Okay, so it won't be graded at all. It, it'll just be, 
you know, I'll give them a Scantron answer sheet. They'll have these stations set up. You can see that there's tape separating the stations. And so they'll get a chance to see, okay, when I show up for the competition, the room is gonna be set up very similar to this. I'll have this type of Scantron answer sheet. I'll have to rotate around. I won't be starting at question number one. There's no guarantee that's where I'm gonna start. And so it basically puts, I think it puts the students a little more at ease by doing the workshop. So don't think, oh, so there are three sessions. The three sessions are 5.30, 6.10, and 6.50. So if you need a particular time, you need to get to the, to the website and sign up quickly because there will only be a limited number of students we can accommodate in each session. Yeah, so don't think, oh, my students haven't, you know, the models won't even be av available till the 20th and now they're going to hold a workshop on the 24th. They won't know anything. It's not about knowing something on the 24th. It's about putting the students at ease so they'll have, you know, an idea of what's going to happen on May 13th. Yeah, and just just so that everybody knows, I mean, there is a very good study guide, very close to what you would see in person. Of course, it's different than being in person, but this should get you going, right? <clears throat> I mean, this yes. is a lot of work that Felicia puts in to prepare for this, and it's 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 in good detail. So you can use this to prepare the kids between now and the 24th, and then, you know, get into the higher gear as your local competitions come closer and closer in March. And I should say this, uh, the supervisors for Macomb, we don't participate in any of the local events. Yeah. So that everyone has, you know, it's fair for everyone. Yeah. We don't do any of the local events. I had a quick question. The models that are going to be available starting on the 20th of February, is there an end date that they're available to the students till? Nope, they stay there all the way until competition time. So I usually don't go and pick them up until after the competition is over. Great, thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right. Uh, if nobody nobody else has a question, we'll uh, I'll stop recording and uh, uh, we'll see you around at one of the other sessions. Okay. Good luck, and I'll yep. see you. Thanks, Felicia. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. See you.